On today's episode of The Glue Guys, um, Steve Nash either mutually parted ways or was fired. The Nets went on a coaching search. They did their due diligence, and they are hiring Ime Odoka. We'll talk about that right now here on the show. Let's get into it. Boom. Welcome back to The Glue Guys. This is Mike here. Say hello, Brian. Hello. Check us out on Twitter at BKGlueGuys, NetsDaily.com, The Athletic. Get yourself on the paywall at TheAthletic.com slash GlueGuys. A subsidiary, The New York Times, Ryan. Michael. Michael. Um, wow. <laughs> that was fast. That, I, did you have whiplash? I got a little whiplash there. Oh. Yeah. Um, I am Miles Teller because I've got some whiplash. Nice. Nicely done. Um, Famously. Crazy day. Crazy couple days, Mike, even. <laughs> crazy we, few days. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're absolutely going to talk about it. I mean, we are recording this at 3.17 p.m. All indications are that Ime Odoka is going to be hired as the next Nets head coach, hired imminently. Yeah. Uh, the Nets did their due diligence. Due diligence was done, my friend, and he will be the next the Nets head coach. We will talk about that on today's show. Just <laughs> Double <as> intro. A, <laughs> wow. wow. Uh, let me just say, yeah. obviously, there's still some Kyrie stuff, and we went in on Kyrie on our Saturday show. Yeah. Our Shabbat episode of the glue guys nice shabbat shalom to you thank you um mazel tov to you there's there's still some fallout you know i think what you're seeing is you're seeing some more national writers actually watch the documentary yeah i saw mike vaccaro from the new york post who's not really a national writer but a, a fairly big deal writer he did a whole column where he actually watches i think shout out to pablo Torre. did a did a nice little bit on it yeah and pablo and i were in the dms and i was giving him some some just like hey thank you for uh kind of Posting that because I do think it's important. Cons- We're not going to talk about You're Kyrie conspiring Irving in, this episode. in the DMs. You're conspiring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is the conspiracy. Yeah, because Pablo Torre is an unknown Jewish <laughs> Crypto. journalist. Yeah, that happens. Uh, um, so, you know, it's, a, it's funny, Brian. Okay, we picked up like there's a lot of chatter. So I tweeted out over the weekend like a Adolf Hitler quote that Kyrie had in his the documentary that he likes and like so our our mentions have been. Different, different than usual. I'll say that. What happens when you yeah. quote Hitler? Usually, <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. a certain bug, particularly under Elon Musk, that happens that sends yeah. a pipeline is created. Yeah, I don't really. We don't like that. Like we're not. That, that hasn't, that hasn't that been we're our soy guy. Yeah, now. yeah. I, it's I not know. our brand. I well, that, that is our brand, but the. <laughs> You know, we like to talk it's about not, David it's not my Jr. It's not my brand, okay? I'm not drinking soy. I got <laughs> fruit smoothies coming out of my ears, like like a true Chad, like a giga Chad. <laughs> um, and so I had full intent to go on this episode. Sure, I was going to talk a little bit more about Kyrie because I think it is important. But I had full intent to be like, okay, let's talk about yeah. Utah Watanabe. Yes. Yeah. Utah was fantastic. Um, ascendant. Um, but Steve Nash gets fired. Something that I've been calling for for months so i should be happy yeah um, this is gonna get complicated because people are gonna say like I, I don't know where you're about to fall in the whole spectrum of things like i have no idea and i'm interested to hear your thoughts but it is difficult to f- go back to back into <laughs> but this is the nets this is the position that we've been put in here i mean we're just we're you know we love we love drama um a certain kind of drama that i don't think you know we are super comfortable talking about again not to hem and haw about the whole thing but like you know, um, it Our uh, new podcast name it's, is Hem and Hall. It's it's complicated because like we weren't particularly, I mean, not at all Steve Nash defenders at any point. So you know, any of the like, I can already hear the accusations forming of like being you know cloud cover for Steve Nash or some standing Steve Nash in some way that just has never been the case here. So I just wanted to put that out. Like yeah. this is complicated in a couple ways, and it's a little bit because we don't like we like the Steve Nash got fired. I think <laughs> can I say that? Can I yes. synthesize it? Yeah, yeah. If this guy everything didn't happen, if he did not tweet out an anti-Semitic documentary that quotes Hitler and talks about the supposed lies that Jewish people peddle in the world, like Holocaust and all that stuff, you know, I would be celebrating today. I would be out in the streets. I would be taking off my shirt, twirling around don't, my head do like that. a helicopter. Don't do that. Oh, and Petey Pablo. And, <laughs> and yeah, Petey Pablo, shout out yeah. Petey Pablo. Yeah. It was probably awesome. Anyways, the, I would have been very happy, right? 
And I am, I'm kind of happy. I'm not going to lie. I've been, I've been wanting Steve Nash to be gone for a while. He seems like a sweet man, great guy, but he's it's, not it's, a good basketball It's coach. weird to compartmentalize all these different feelings, right? Because, like, I agree with you that it's, like, it's a net good, net benefit um, to separate ties with Steve Nash. The timing of it all is a little bit um, interesting. I'll, I'll call it interesting. So, but anyway, so let's get into it. What do you think? What do you think of the big hire, Mike? <laughs> Ime Hidoka? Yeah. Okay. Here's the bold point that people need to realize. The Boston Celtics, a franchise known not to be like the most, um, they're cutthroat. They are the most cutthroat franchise in the NBA. Now, that was mostly under Danny Ainge, but that is who they were. Okay, for it's embedded in their franchise. What they did to Isaiah Thomas trading him to Cleveland, players didn't want to. And let's be, no, I'm saying let's be honest. Yeah. Brad Stevens is an acolyte of Danny Ainge. Okay, yes, sweet baby face. And all. All right. He is baby a Billy cut. Brad Stevens. <laughs> he's a, he's a baby baby face killer. killer. No, I did not. I did not. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm like, where do you find the time? Anyways. Um when I work. My work hours. <laughs> Got it. Smart. 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 Yeah. Efficient. Um the the Celtics are the most cutthroat franchise in the NBA. They are one, they suspended Ime Adoka for a year coming off of a finals appearance. They suspended him for a year while it was known in the locker room the players loved him. Like yeah. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have talked about how much Ime's coaching has meant to them. They suspended him for a year and are allowing him just to go to a contender. I guess we're still kind of contenders, the Brooklyn Nets, right? Tangential. Let's, let's squint at it and say yes. Yeah. Divisional rivals. Yeah, there you go. Right? Atlantic divisional historic <laughs> rivals. They're just going to let that happen. I want people to understand that, that doesn't happen, okay, is if if the thing that Adoka has been accused of, which we don't really know, the only thing that we know is through Woj's reporting and some of Shams's reporting, and I'll read that coming up in a sec, they don't do that unless if they're 100% convinced that they can never have that guy back in the building. Yeah. They can never have it back in the building. So what does that mean for the Nets? Well... <laughs> The Nets have decided decided to fire Steve Nash. I have a graphic behind me for the YouTube audience created yeah. by No Dunks, friend of the shows, mm -hmm. or sh friends of the show. There you go. Um, a fantastic graphic. Around 12.50, Steve Nash is fired. Around 2.10, Emo Doku has basically been hired. Yeah. Right? The, the due diligence has been done. Chris Mannix from Sports Illustrated had said that they've been investigating, the Nets have, over mm -hmm. the past few days. And that, if you go even further back, Stephen A. Smith, VSPN, had been saying that from the very beginning, he was saying the Nets want to hire Adoka. That's who they want to hire. They they've been wanting they've been wanting Steve Nash gone so that they can hire him. Okay. Um, all that said, I highly doubt I trust this organization to actually understand what happened in Boston, and I'm worried. Boston is famous. This is one of these cities in journalism that is famous. Patriots do it. The Red Sox do it, and the Celtics do it. When a guy leaves town, there is a story that absolutely buries that person's reputation. Terry Francona, the Red Sox manager, his reputation was absolutely buried. And and for people that don't know Terry Francona, he's like known as like one of the best dudes in baseball. That is what but they get there was a story that showed up like in the Boston Globe. We're gonna get a story in I would say forty eight hours to five days that will come out and we'll have the details that we're waiting to find out about Adoka. I don't know if this franchise is ready, the Nets. Yeah. To to handle that. Like You know, I, Mike Mike, this is why you're yes. one of the best in the I'm biz. A soy guy. You know, I'm you're soy. you're it's soy, you can't I'm, help that. I've I've already processed soy. that and I love you for Beans. all of your soy. Um but here's what people need to understand. It's Mike is a newsman, okay, through and through. And he just understands how these things develop. And I think that that's like a really um it's a really deft take you just had, Mike, because it's it's mostly about like, you know, whatever the situation well, Jews is control the media and I'm Jewish. <laughs> there you go. So I didn't, I'm glad you said it. Cause I didn't want to, um, yeah, you I saw in your eyes, <laughs> yeah. your, your um, dirty Irish eyes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Hey, I thought the Catholics and the Jews, I thought we had a thing. No? Oh, we, we get, we do. I, I don't know. I thought that was part of, I think I read that. In that the book. is part of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Catholics yeah. were, people don't talk about the Catholics were also, we, we, fly under, we, we, we just don't advocate for ourselves. We're like, yeah, I know we suck. We suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um, the Emilio Doku situation, like I, you know, there's there's a lot to say about it. Like, you know, to your point, a bunch of the information has been like conspicuously missing from the public record for a while. Um, so, you know, I don't 
feel qualified to weigh in on that. He obviously came from the Nets franchise. He was he was born of of our franchise and came through the ranks. And so, uh, well, the extent that he did as an assistant. Um, and so, there's obviously a level of um, knowledge about him as a person. I don't really care to weigh in on all that stuff. He seems like a good coach. There's like, you know, not to put cloud cover on this, but is this franchise really right now in a position to withstand if that, if that nefarious article does come down the pike, as I suspect it will, um, are we in a position to, to weather that storm yet another storm? Um, I, it doesn't actually, I, I feel like we're just so beaten and battered anyways, that it's like, it doesn't really, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but like, I guess this is me like putting on my Nets fandom hat instead of like my like high-minded ethical hat. Like, you know, again, I don't pretend to know what happened there. There's a, there's a lot in the reports that, that needs to be said. Um, but just like, what is the, the franchise is just in such a weird spot and to insta hire a guy with, with, you know, at least a little bit of reputational baggage, we'll call it, uh, so quickly and with, <laughs> such little n- like it seems just like that that was a um a meteor that was headed for us one way or another so um yeah i guess yeah. this is all to say i don't have i haven't i don't haven't fully formed my opinion on this but it is a little disconcerting let's call it that i i mean the sean marks to do his press conference outside of the four seasons total landscaping place that Rudy yeah. giuliani did <laughs> <laughs> in, remember during the post election? Yeah, of course. Of course, yeah. I remember. I mean, Sean, honestly, I, I would appreciate it if the Nets. I mean, Nets PR. That really, if not, you had come up with that joke sooner, that would have been my background. I would have, I would have gone through the effort to <laughs> go, go dive in real quick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really the Nets situation at this point. Again, to clarify, and this feels so sad to say this like this, but like, happy Steve Nash is fired. I think he is authentically not a good basketball coach. I think maybe the, the qualities that he brings to the team was that he um, sort of had like, you know, the very calm demeanor, positive, was a great clapper. Um, but 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 it was obvious that the players didn't respect him. I mean, it was, it was, it was Kevin Durant wanted him gone. Yeah, it was a bad situation from the from the from the jump. I mean, I think, you know, again, without knowing a ton of the details, like the early issues with Kenny Atkinson presumably or because Kenny Atkinson had a little bit more balls than Steve and would push back on stuff that he thought was bad for the long-term relative health of the team or whatever. And Steve Nash was maybe brought in to be a bit of a, you know, a, a pillowcase, you know, he's just like a, or like he just was there to kind of get steamrolled by the more influential star players. It's, it's a way of doing things, but like the track record has been really bad to this point, right? It hasn't worked. So, you know, there's a, I, I'm not saying that that's strategically like the worst idea because maybe that's exactly what this team would have needed. We've seen it proven out pretty verifiably that that wasn't the case. So it makes sense to move on from that strategy. Uh, Ime Aduku, baggage aside, is that, is a, it seems like a kind of guy that can manage that, you know? <laughs> but, wait, that baggage is broad. It is broad. And we don't know what's inside the baggage. It, yeah. it, we don't know if it's a, you know, it's not, has not yet gone through the x-ray machine. Right. You know, it, it, we're still waiting for boarding. Yeah. And did you, what, did you watch that inside? Netflix documentary about the, the like young, the North, the North Irish woman, uh, who was just like sort of pretty easily persuaded into smuggling drugs from Peru into Ibiza. And be, oh, Ibiza. <laughs> no, yeah. there's a whole documentary about that. So yeah, it's a micro documentary, a three-parter. <laughs> three-part documentary about yeah. that one. Hey, I didn't make it. It's on Netflix, man. Um, Oh, it, it yeah. was on Prime <laughs> Tasting this documentary. <laughs> yeah. Why is no one talking about Bezos? Yeah. Uh, you, the P, I just, I promise you. Don't get no baited. One, Do not get baited. Guys, You're getting baited right get, now. The people in the mentions, there were so many mute buttons being thrown around. Oh, I, I, um, the block was, the, the band hammer was coming out uh, a lot. Anyways. Here, the, again, Ime, very good coach. Excellent coach. Did, but frankly, only had one year of coaching. So I don't, I actually don't want to go that crazy with it. Um, but very good coach. The, but the, I want to trace this back to when Steve Nash was hired. Mm-hmm. No one wanted Steve Nash to be a head coach. Okay before he was hired. He was a consultant with the Warriors. No one even thought. It was it was looking like Steve Nash was going to go down media bro route, you know, kind of be like, I mean, honestly, his career would be better if he ended up trying to go like JJ Reddick get a podcast, do some interviews. Your life would have been way better. Right? He seemed to be a big family man living his life out in California and then helping out the Warriors whenever maybe they needed it or whenever he wanted it. The Nets made the choice for Steve Nash because of his relationship with Kevin Durant. 
and his relationship with Sean Marks. That was an odd coaching hire, completely out of the blue. Apparently, I heard Sham say today that Nash was considering it for three weeks. Like, he was going back and forth, right? Which, to me, indicates that, like, you know, if you propose to someone and they take that long to say yes, don't get married to them. Okay. Right? So the same organization that made that flawed coaching hire is now hiring Ime. Now, Ime has a way better track record, was an assistant coach for a long time for many prominent teams. He coached Ben Simmons with the 76ers for a year. He obviously had an impact on Kyrie and KD. But if we believe Chris Mannix, the Nets have been doing their due diligence for a few days. There is no way in hail, Brian, mm. Mm. that their due diligence has been done enough. There is no <laughs> way. So whatever Sean Mark says at 5 o'clock, because Brian and I debated. We're like, are we going to pot after what Sean Mark says or before? And we're both like, we have lives to live, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's nothing that he can say if they're going to announce that Ime is, in fact, the head coach that will fully satisfy any idea of credibility in the search they wanted him if we believe Stephen A. Smith again the Nets have wanted Ime to be the coach yeah I don't think they and I say the Nets I honestly think it's Joe Sy at this point I don't think Sean Marks is running the show to the degree that he was I think Joe, Joe Sy is firmly deciding Whoa. these things what are you basing that on that's crazy speculation Mike because I don't think at this point, with what happened in the offseason with Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, the reporting was that he wanted Nash and Marks gone. I think Joe Sy is way more involved than before than what we believe. The, a person who hires Ime Udoka with the cloud around him, again, it, a, was that a cumulonimbus? I don't know what kind of cloud it is. The, one, the, the storm uh, cloud? The storm cloud. I think it's a, nim, a nimbi. Yeah. Uh, well, look at you. Well, that's the, you know. I yes. don't know. That, no, I think cumulon literally cumulonimbus is the only yeah. cloud. <laughs> but I think it's the storm one. I think that's the yeah, stormy yeah. one. Yeah, this is the stormy Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> it's the stormy Daniels nice. cloud. Um, ownership has to one be fully involved in that decision if you're going to hire someone who has a cloud surrounding them. And in fact, with this type of ownership, what we've seen with Joe Sy is that he is very involved. He has conversations with Kevin Durant. He wants to have conversations with Kyrie Irving about anti-Semitism. He doesn't get to have them. Mm -hmm. Um, he or, or maybe he had them and they just didn't go well. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think yeah. that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. Um, I wonder when we're going to hear from Kyrie again. You know, because uh, he didn't talk. After don't don't worry, Pacers it'll game. it'll happen soon soon enough. I'm sure. Ugh. Um, God, he's still on the team. Um, so I think I think you don't make this move as quickly as you do, unless if it's. If Joe Sy is pretty heavily involved, at least I'll give it that much. I think he's very heavily involved with this decision. Okay. Regardless of what reporting comes out. You want to do a quick break and coming back, we'll do extra thoughts. Yeah. <coughs> Get a little cold, sorry. All right, coming back. How do you think the team is going to react to this? So we've talked about the controversy, the outside locker room buzz. You know, I, I, I do think the franchise has to guard itself for the eventual behind the scenes story from a Boston based writer who is going to dig deep into the franchise. Cause you know, at this point the Celtics employees will now be loose lipped. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how do you think the team is going to react? Well, this is going to be a little conspir conspiratorial for, for you. Sorry. Conspiratorial for you. Um, and as is the theme of this team anyway. So, you know, here I go diving in with you boys. Um, Kying on baby. Yeah. Um, I, there was some, a little bit of, you know, bubbling, percolating in the Discord, shout out to the Discord, um, about whether they were sandbagging Steve Nash uh, in the beginning of the season. Um, you know, obviously, there's a pretty direct line of thinking here. They wanted him fired, or at least Kevin Durant wanted him fired. And then the first five games of the season were dis truly disgusting, right? Like, there was not all the way through disgusting, but, like, you know, the fourth quarter collapses um, were pretty... Y remarkable in in the way that the consistency of those fourth quarter collapses and third quarter to a lesser extent but like there was just a um i i generally don't tr tend to engage in conspiratorial thinking but having watched that uh output 
I get it. I see a little bit about what people are talking about. Um, so I think the short term returns on any new coach, just truly anybody like, you know, Jacques Vaughn or whomever, it's going to mean better basketball up front because that's sort of how it always goes. Right. Lawrence Frank, you know, usurps um, Byron Scott and they go on a whatever 15, 10 game winning streak, whatever it was back. Then. This is old memes. These are 2004 memes. Um, yeah. Nate McMillan takes over for, um, gosh, what is Lloyd Pierce and the Hawks go, yeah, rampaging. Yeah, so I think that there's a pretty big vested interest in performing at a high level in the short term, and I think that that we'll see probably better basketball so that the – Everyone kind of does the vindication arc of, you know, Steve Nash really was the problem. Um, And not to say that he wasn't a big part of the problem, because he certainly was, but he's not all of the problem. Um, Now, does Ime Udoku have what it takes to truly, like, create a sort of, like, mafioso inside, like, everyone's got tight lips in this organization, and we can, like, you know, keep Kyrie from tweeting dumb shit, and, you know, have this all be a, a you know, coalesce around <laughs> everyone's got skeletons in the closet type situation? I You know, it's possible. It's, you know, knowing how people work a little bit. You know, I, I think ultimately, like, this is going to sound really cynical. I think the short-term returns are going to be a vast improvement in the basketball quality. What it does for the for the franchise long term uh, remains to be seen. It's a dicey, dicey situation, of course. Um, and you know, a lot of people, and not to soy out on everybody. So if you you guys are gonna you know SJW attack me, you know here's the moment to do it. A lot of people in Discord, you know, a lot of female members of our Discord, um, shout out, you know, really really not into this. And uh, I think that that's a you know, that's something to take notice of. That's, you know, like, the, to, to the same extent that everyone had has their issues with when everyone, like, when any anytime something like this kind of comes up, it is helpful to hear, you know, people out. And uh, I, there is a instinctive, you know, this is sports, right? And there's an instinctive urge to just, like, steamroll and be like, no, this is going to be good. Everything's going to be good. But, you know, it, it's I think it's important to take just a little bit of a snapshot, take the temperature of the, you know, other people in the room who share in the fandom. We want to make this a big, collective, holistic, safe space. You know, soy out, cringe, I get it. But, um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's part of that's part of what uh, building a good community means. Um, so to that extent, I'm pretty... You know, I'm pretty suspicious of the whole thing. Um, so yeah. it's it's a complicated situation because, again, like I said, if if your only vested interest in being a Nets fan is to stack dubs, then I think you're probably going to be happy. If part of your fandom means, you know, having a group of people with whom ethically you feel like you can root for, then you're going to have a bit more of a hard time. That's how it comes down. And I, part of what's kind of shifted my change in caring about history, the history of people is Kyrie Irving because I remember before June 30th 2019 you did you and I did a bunch of pods like because we were pretty adamant about like the Nets have a real shot at getting Kyrie and KD just like reading the tea leaves that we do I I would Um, say we manifested it probably I think I think that's fair to say yeah, I, I, I 100% agree. We're yeah. the reason. Uh, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, but we did have, like, very real debates of, like, would you rather have D'Angelo Russell versus Kyrie? And we had those debates, right? And obvi- th- th- then we saw Kyrie's first game as a net, and we're like, that was the dumbest thing that we talked about. But the reason why we talked about D'Angelo Russell versus Kyrie had nothing to do with the play on the court, really. And it really just had to do with the fact that D'Angelo Russell, while – isn't known as like this like dynamic leader who's you know uh inspiring guys to go to normandy and beat the beat the nazis oh i didn't mean to make a nazis thing uh we're talking about Kyrie. one sec let me back up there just kidding um (laughs) Kyrie was like so destructive in boston Mm -hmm. and we're like i don't know if we want to bring that here to brooklyn remember this is the good vibes we we pretty uh succinctly we're just like he's fine he's good we like him (laughs) like that like for anyone that says that like no no, pre, I'm talking about pre oh, Kyrie yes, declaring. Pre, pre declaring. As, 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 as our, oh, our fan, yeah, yeah, I know. Our fan hats were on as soon as he declared, but yes. Yeah, as soon as he declared, we shifted. We said, well, we're not going to be against Kyrie Irving. And then we saw him play. And we're like, wow, he's amazing. And you watched an interview with, that he did with like Jason a Tatum. Couple of people, Jason Tatum. And then you were like, wow, Jason Tatum. Seems seemed like an ingrate in that in that conversation. I'll tell yeah. you that. And Kyrie yeah. was like very interesting. And we're yeah. like, okay, we, we, we're shifting, right? Yeah. And then Kyrie posted a picture of him as a kid wearing a net shirt. 
And so we all kind of like backtracked off of our media point because then we got new information or new things happened. There was positive um, things that were happening on the court. So we're like, oh, Kyrie's amazing, right? He's way better. And he is way better than D'Angelo Russell. And D'Angelo Russell, his journey, like the, the Wolves would probably trade him right now yeah, if it's, there was a good deal. Yeah. But our original take pre-anything was like Kyrie is bad for a team. And that has been borne out to be true. Ime Adoka, we don't have enough information but here's what is in Woj's story today about the Nets' imminent hiring of Ime. Here's the last three paragraphs. The independent law firm probe into Adoka found that he used crude language in his dialogue with a female subordinate before the start of an improper workplace relationship with the woman, an element that significantly factored into the severity of his suspension. Those findings, which described a verbiage on Odoka's part that was deemed especially concerning coming from a workplace superior, contributed to what was an unlikely pathway to his reinstatement as the Celtics coach in 2023. The power dynamic associated with the superior's improper relationship with the staff member was the primary finding and policy violation cited in the independent law firm's report that was completed early last week. Um, all of that, there, it, it's concerning, but we don't have enough information, right? I think the information that we need to realize that, we're, that we received is how people have reacted within the Celtics organization to Ime. He was suspended for an entire year and they don't give a crap that he's leaving. They seem, the, the Celtics couldn't fight this, you know, but they're gonna let it happen from what we can tell. That indicates, should indicate to people that what happened is bad. And soy guys part. Looked, looked, yeah, part four. You know, I, I like, if you're a woman who works for the Nets right now, I, I would, not that it's not be, be concerned necessarily is the right word. It's like you would really want to hear a lot of information from your superiors because you're bringing in a guy who has the cloud around him. Uh, that was there was an improper workplace relationship. Everyone said that it was consensual. That's what the initial reporting was that it was consensual, but that it something happened that was so bad that they were to get rid of this bright young star of a coach, right? so bad and they're just gonna mm -hmm. let him go to a rival so i would <clears throat> again we, i wanted steve nash gone yeah. i i i think this team has been severely lacking a stable hand at coaching uh, they have not had an advantage at coaching since kenny atkinson left um or was fired um and even then it wasn't like super superior there was people had problems with kenny atkinson but they haven't had an advantage in coaching in a while uh Ime can give you that but there's just like a lot of other stuff and yeah. the speed of which, which this is happening, the 90 minutes from firing Steve Nash to imminently hiring Udoka is, um, I mean, what it is just leaves <laughs> the organization open to a what massive is, amount of criticism. We're going to, I'm going to sign us up for professional PR training, Mike, for this podcast, because we we're going to, if this keeps going, I mean, who's next, who are we going to hire next? <laughs> That's going to be like, who, like, it's just, um, these these conversations are too delicate for us, us soy boys to really take on <laughs> at the rate that they're coming at us. It's too dicey. I don't like in, again. Like, how much do I care? You know, I I'm sure Ema will have a press conference and he'll he'll say the right things and you know maybe we'll find out what it was and what happened and maybe we'll feel a little bit differently. And, and I'm willing to open myself up to like feeling differently in two weeks from now. I'm just saying in this moment, I doubt the Nets organization really knows everything that happened in Boston. The The speed with which this is happening is very concerning. The Nets just won last night, so I'm sure they knew that Steve Nash was going to be gone. Um, I'm happy that Steve Nash is gone, but I think this team, it, there's a lot happening. And we didn't even mention Ben Simmons has a knee injury that is continuing to keep him out of games. And I'm just going to say this. I know he got back surgery last season, so he really had a back injury. But this knee injury thing is like feeling very. Remember how the injury the little under underreported sort of standard Nets operating procedure. Yeah, and like we're going to find out. Ben Simmons is getting an evaluation. He'll be back in six weeks to a year. Yeah, can like I, I can yeah. I speculate a little? I mean, I know that it's slightly hyperbolic. Um, and this is early returns, but, you know, and again, not to get cynical on this, like the Ben Simmons experiment was not great in the early going there. And, um, you know, last night's game to talk about that a little bit was yeah. um, was, uh, you know, a market improvement. Right. There was, you know, it's a pretty night and day difference between him in the starting lineup and him not in the starting lineup. Um, 
it's an interesting opportunity to have what I've, you know, I don't claim to be the only person that has this take, um, though I did think I came up with it in a vacuum. I, I think many people have had this thought, which is like, is it the worst thing to do the ramp of Ben Simmons and then the ramp ends at like you just kind of lead the second unit? Uh, if, if this could be sort of a, um, a, a tool by which to integrate him into a second unit more organically than just kind of like having it be a standard demotion. Um, because I do think that like his, his particular state play style is best suited for, you know, that, that like, you know, maybe kind of combining those, those other kind of, uh, personalities, uh, or not personalities players. Um, so maybe there's something there, but, um, and that's not to say that like, I want him to be injured cause that's not the case, but I think to having a minute, a, a breath to just be like, what's up with the Ben Simmons experiment is not the worst thing. Yeah, I don't think it's the worst thing. I just don't want this knee thing to turn. Like, I think it's been very rough on Simmons uh, mentally. And I don't, I'm not inside his head, but, like, you can see on the court, he questions everything he does on the offensive side of the floor pretty much. Besides, like, when he he's really only decisive when he passed the ball to an open man. And you know what's funny? I went back and I watched Summer League of his rookie year. It's, like, the most different person I've ever – like, it's, it's two totally different people. Like, he is a, a changed person. Um, which it's just, which is sad and, and weird to, to kind of witness, but it's like, I do like, it's the, they are diametrically opposed kind of players. He's so free and willing to make mistakes and just like do crazy meme passes that, you know, more often than not work out. And it's like, God, I wish he could get back to that place. I don't know. You need some gnosis, honestly. Get that gnosis. Get the we, gnosis. I need no, we, we need gnosis, Mike. Um, yeah. To qu- quickly about the game, Nick Claxton was in. A monster. And fuego. And fuego. Um, that if we get that Nick Claxton like every day, not that you would, but that that was that was a defining performance. Yeah, it's trending more in that direction than than not. Well, you I hate think. him though. Mike, you hate him. You you declared Mike, that you don't want him on the game. Don't don't Twitter troll me, okay? Don't you? Do um, that. One last thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, firing versus mutually parting ways. <laughs> Nash reported it as I think he reported it as a firing or. None. Woj reported as a firing. Uh, Shams reported as mutual parting ways, and then Woj came back and said, "Actually, it's a mutual parting ways." Um, I don't really care. I did. We did talk about this on the Saturday show. Uh, it's funny. I feel like I should get credit for this too. I I said I think Nash yeah. may be leaving soon because that, the Phoenix Suns Phoenix ownership. Group. Yeah, yeah, a Phoenix Suns ownership situation. I honestly guarantee that's why part of why this is happening yeah i think i mean it's a maybe a distinction of that that much of a difference the firing versus parted ways because i my i imagine like steven Nash is like thank you you know <laughs> thank you for letting me go um that it didn't like they didn't he didn't come to them and be like we should you know mutually agree to separate that they fired him and he was like yes thank you you know it's kind of like the pen the kendrick perkins meme um he's kendrick perkins had a good tweet that was like uh kind of putting this sort of paradox into stark terms and it was like the nets you know quote you're fired and steve nash quote i agree is like the sort of mutual agreement which is like is <laughs> i think he meant it like more in jest as like uh, he was definitely fired but um i actually think that that's probably sort of how, <laughs> how it went that's more closer to the truth than maybe he meant i honestly the thing that struck my head i saw um a reporter for cbs sports tweet out an image of steve nash and Jacques vaughn at practice yesterday talking to each other and it made me think about the scene in succession season one mm. when tom is made head of parks right and he goes in the meeting with <laughs> the guy and he's like i gotta show you one yeah. thing and right. he just starts explaining the most like no, you can look at it or you don't have to yeah you know, like the, the most horrific stuff yeah and that is steve nash to every coach would be like he like would be very calm about it but he would be explaining yeah <laughs> that's Here, so good here's like all the skeletons in the closet and if you actually try to grapple with them, you know, anti-Semitism, you know, Hitler, uh, trade requests, all this stuff. Uh, it may take you down too, yeah. which it did me, but hey, I'm going to retire with my golden parachute and yeah. move about my day. There you so go. good for Steve Nash. He's he's doing well. He, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Do you Mike, think he'll ever be a head coach again? I do not. I really don't think that that's his. I think one more time. I think there's like like 15 years from now, there'll be one more time or something. I think randomly. All right. Bet you five bucks. 15 years. Get a 15 year window, right? Make it five Bitcoin and I'll do it. <laughs> How much is that worth? I don't, I haven't been checking. $5 that. now. <laughs> yeah, got him. Suck uh, on that Bitcoin. Mike, get us out of here. 
<laughs> thank you all so much for listening at soy guys no at b at bk glue guys on twitter that's the com, the athletic subsidiary of the new york times um it i will tell you this if you're going to get a subscription to the athletic wait till black friday we usually have a black oh. friday deal it's usually like amazing it's like a yeah. dollar for a year or something crazy wait till then we to look out um, for people and and also like make that a gift it's such an easy gift a gift of journalism wow okay wow a dying um, art mike all right we got to go love you guys brian let's stay here <laughs> brian <laughs> yeah the gift of journalism all right bye everybody